Hello again, friendly YouTube people. Um, I thought for my next video, uh, Pocket NC video, I would talk about tool length offsets. Uh, the Pocket NC doesn't have a tool length probe, which is something a lot of CNC machines do have. Um, and it's even more important on a five axis machine than on a three axis machine. Um, and since the Pocket NC doesn't have a tool length probe, I thought I'd talk about a few manual ways uh, you can calibrate your, uh, your tool lengths uh, for, for the best output. On a five axis machine, uh, tool length offsets can really come and bite you in the ass if you're not careful. Um, let's say you're machining something that looks like this and you've got your end mill coming in from one side here and then later you rotate your workpiece uh, and you come in from this side over here. Um, if your tool is too long and you don't realize it, if your tool is badly calibrated and your tool is too long and it sticks into your workpiece you'll end up milling out too deep. And you can imagine if, you're, if you had the right geometry and if your tool was too long, too, too much too long, you could end up breaking through your part uh, and separating this part off or um, you know any number of other bad things. If you, uh, for instance, on the first part tutorial um, from the Pocket NC website, if you're machining those impeller blades, um, you end up machining them from two sides sort of. You end up machining them like this and then you rotate it one seventh of a turn and you machine them again from the other side and if your tool length is too long you'll machine all the way through them in a few places. Uh, so it's really important to calibrate your tool length offsets uh, as best you can and I've come up with a way of doing it that I think is fairly simple and all it takes is a little bit of scrap material like wood or wrench shape or uh, machining wax or anything dimensionally stable um, and you can get a really good tool length offset. Um, so I'm going to show you Infusion first, and then I'll show you on the machine, and then I'll, uh, I'll go through the whole process. So this is my tool length calibration setup in Fusion that I use for the Pocket NC. Because the Pocket NC doesn't have a tool length probe, uh, I find that it's sometimes pretty difficult to calibrate my tool lengths um, to be as precise as I'd like them to be, especially if you're milling, uh, like for instance, if you were milling vertically on this and horizontally and your tool was too long, there'd be a chance you'd pop through in places you didn't want to. Um, so I have this test part that I use, uh, and I have a bunch of blocks of stock that I whipped up that are all in, uh, I use wren shape, but you could use machining wax or wood, anything dimensionally stable and relatively soft, this would work fine for. Uh, and then I machine it from both sides like this. So if my tool length is longer than I measured with calipers or shorter than I measured with calipers, this, will, this pocket will be deeper or shallower than um, this is specified in the file. Um, and since I have that uh, machined on both sides, the difference in how thick this uh, part is in this region will tell me the difference uh, in what my TLOs should be. Um, so I, I get a rough TLO with a pair of calipers off the spindle, then I do a part like this, and then I can calculate what my actual TLO, my effective TLO is from the tool. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you that all again uh, on the Pocket NC. So let's look at that now. And here we are at the Pocket NC. Um, the tool I'm going to calibrate today is one of the tools from the Pocket NC tool pack. It's the uh, 16th inch long reach stub flute end mill. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that right in the spindle there and bottom it all the way out and hold it while I lock it. And so that's against the back of the spindle so it is a repeatable, repeatable distance. Um, and then I've got my calibration block here which is just a piece of wren shaped foam that I've cut to match the size of the foam that uh, I have in my CAD model. And make sure that vise is tight and uh, go over an axis on my computer here and hit play hit go and uh, I'll see you when it's over. Okay, so we just got our calibration block off the pocket NC and I've got my micrometer here and uh, let's see how wrong we were. 0 0.7605, 0 0.7603, 0 0.7603, 0 0.7609, 0 0.7609. So it seems like things are consistently falling around 0 0.7605. 
which is a pretty significant error. That's an error of, let's see, that's 0 0.0105 of error, which means that we're, since we're compounding our error twice by milling from both sides, so we have one error for this side, one error from this side. So that's 0 0.00525 inches of tool length offset error in our tool table. Um, so the last time what I did was I measured with a caliper from the end of the spindle to the end of the tool and then did the pocket NC math that's on the pocket NC website for how to calibrate or calculate your TLO from your tool length. So this is how you calculate what to put in your tool table based on what you measure your tool length to be. So the number that I put in my tool table was negative 2.2611. Um, and I am, that number is wrong by 0 0.00525 according to the measurement we just took of this block. So because the block is bigger than the CAD should be, that means our tool on our machine is actually is shorter than the machine thinks that it is, if that makes sense. So that means that we need to make our TLO in our tool table 0 0.00525 inches larger or actually more negative because this negative sign is just plonked on here so that doesn't matter so we're gonna take our TLO from it currently was negative 2.2611 and we're gonna make it negative 2.26625 Six, two, five. Save file. Now, I'm going to take this block and I take the side that we didn't use, this side, and flip it around and put that side of my block in the pocket NC where the, uh, well, inside, in where the machine's going to mill a test block. Tighten down my vise. Save my tool table and mill it again, and we'll take another measurement and see if we were right, see if that fixed our TLO error. Okay, so we have our second calibration cut on this end, and I'm gonna stick the micrometer on it and see if we fixed our uh, See if we fixed our tool length error. So we came pretty close. We're at 0 0.7531. Um, I'll take another measurement just to be uh, 0 0.752. So we're pretty good. We, we're getting there. And I bet a lot of that remaining error, uh, probably hard to see, I bet a lot of that remaining error is just due to um, the deflection of the material out of the way or the, um, the, you know, the, the softness of this material maybe not getting quite as good of a cut as it ought to be, that sort of thing. Um, but we could keep looping in on this process until we got to exactly the right tool length offset. Um, it would probably only take another loop. We're within 0 0.002 or 0 0.003 of our uh, exact tool length, so uh, I think that's probably an acceptable error within two thou for now anyways. And if you care more, you can calibrate more. Um, so just to recap, put your tool in the spindle, take a caliper or whatever measurement you have and get as close as you can to what the tool length is and use the formula on the pocket NC website to calculate what your TLO ought to be. Then cut one of these blocks or invent your own shape to cut, but make sure that when you cut it, it's a known, perfectly known length. So cut it from both sides or cut it from the top against a known face. I like to cut it from both sides because that way I know exact that both sides are the thing that I controlled in the thing and a, it's a, a completely a result of TLO error. Um, then measure what you got against what you think you should have gotten based on what was in your CAD file and then use that to go back and adjust your TLO and repeat until you get a satisfactory calibration. Um, 
I'm going to hopefully soon, or I shouldn't say soon because I'm pretty busy, but sometime I would really like to add an electrical uh, tool length probe to the Pocket NC. And I have a few ideas for how I would do that, but um, I think that's going to be a bigger project than I expect it to be, so I don't know if I'll have that done anytime soon. Um, but I'll let you know when I do. And uh, stay tuned for, uh, for more Pocket NC videos. I have a few other ideas, but uh, I'm going to be moving soon, so I'm not really sure when I'll when I'll get to it, but um, I'm going to try to get into some resin uh, casting, resin casting and mold making on the Pocket NC, making small parts um, for some upcoming projects. So uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye.